Hey everyone, uh, my name is Shi Yu, and uh, I also come from ByteDance. And uh, in this talk, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, some uh, aggregation related optimizations that I've done to the Presto native uh, worker runtime. Uh, and uh, uh, they, they were all triggered by uh, this case where we're using, uh, we're experimenting with different. Uh, input batch sizes. Okay, so uh, the the background is uh, we have a time series database that was storing like time series data. So the data would be three columns: uh, IP address, uh, timestamp, and the value. Just your uh, typical box standard time series data. And there was two ways of representing the data. Um, one way is the way on the right, where every row is just one three tuple, like IP address, timestamp, and the value. So the value would be like um, something like, um, like you know, what, how much memory I'm using, like 80 gig. So the, the point value of, of the time series database. So that would be one way of storing data. Oh, 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 sorry, one way of um, representing data in our vectors. The other way is to, um, rep to basically combine the second, the timestamp and value column into a map uh, and then keep IP as its own column. So the data then physically will look something like from the post or the machine with IP address 1111. Um, there is these data values at these timestamps, and then on the host at IP address 2222, there will be you know, a second batch of timestamp and values. So, so this is the background. Basically, we're trying to run aggregations on time series data, and we had two basically equally viable ways of representing uh, the, the raw values. And so we thought we'll experiment both uh, and, uh, and see how they perform. Uh, so, so, so the aggregation query, just for example, would be something like, um, you know, select, um, select all and then group by IP and uh, sum the value, something like that. So with this, um, the, the first observation we realize is that uh, when we use the, the, um, the, the flat representation where like every row is a three tuple, aka the not, the not map way, uh, the overall, if we look at the flame graph of um, just typical aggregation um, execution, we spend about 30 more 30x more time in vector destruction, uh, which is basically the time uh, it takes to deallocate memory. And the reason for that is because with, um, every, with every basically batch of, or vector of values, there is a fixed overhead in allocation and deallocating the memory used to hold the, the values. So uh, in, with the map way, because the timestamp and values are compacted into maps, there is, a, there is an overall fewer number of rows, meaning uh, if you use a fixed batch size, there will be overall fewer batches going through your query execution pipeline. And and if you're, and as I said earlier, because with each batch there's a fixed overhead with allocating and deallocating memory. If you're using fewer batches, then you're paying less time in allocating and deallocating the memories. So that was uh, one like uh, significant difference in the performance between these two representations, which is if if you're just flattening everything out, or AKA unnesting, um, you will. Uh, be incurring more input batches, uh, and uh, there will be more memory alloc and deallocate related. So the solution 
basically simple. Use a, use a much larger batch size, batch size so that uh, even when you're in the flat representation way, uh, you're still, everything still can fit in fewer one or two batches. So, so that was uh, the observation and the change that we made uh, in, in this journey. And then, so we thought we, once we do that, uh, there will be no performance differences. But then, um, actually, that was uh, not the case either. After we kind of um, changed the batch size so that um, we're using like super large batch, we uh, realized that um, whilst it did reduce the memory deallocation time, but overall, uh, the time spent in allocation became slower. And specifically, uh, is spent specifically when you are using a super large batch, the uh, vector hashing becomes slower. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, in the Presto native worker runtime, or Velox, uh, as it was called, is called, uh, the, there are three hash modes in terms of, in order of greediness. W one is um, the array, array mode, and then the second mode is normalized key. Uh, so array mode is like basically random, uh, random access. Like um, there's no hashing. So basically a, a value comes in and we can uh, pinpoint it to a slot in an array of where that value would go. Normalized key is like, um, is like a, um, a mode slower than that where uh, we compute this index in an array, we, we, we still can basically get to a place where we just have an index into an array and that's, that's where the value hashes. That's the, the value would stay in hash table, but we need to compute the normalized key first. And then the, the last one, the last hash mode is hash, which means um, we use a hash value to basically, which is, bas which is basically linear probing. So we have a hash value that lets you know roughly where in the hash map a value would go, but then you need to compare it to the actual key value to see if it's, if it's the same key. So uh, Velox has these three modes. And then the way it, it works is uh, every time an input batch comes in, uh, it, it, adds, it tries to add input into the hash table. And then um, if it figures out the, cur the current hash mode, let's say we're on array, which is the most greedy way, uh, cannot handle it because there's too many values. Then it degrades to the next, uh, next greedy level in, in terms of greediness, ne next one down. Uh, and, then, and then once it degrades, it has to rehash everything because um, every time you change the hash mode, you have to rehash everything. So basically the hash table cycle is something like you add an input, it tries to fit everything in the hash table, and if it sees it can't do that, it will optionally uh, rehash. The, the reason we are using a super large batch size, like a batch with a million rows, uh, that's bad for this, is because um, for the, because previously, before I made my, my, my our optimization to hash table, it tries to basically you know, fit everything in the batch to, into the hash table. And even if as partway through that, it, it already realizes it cannot possibly fit everything in, meaning a rehash is, ne is necessary, it must take place, it still goes through all of the rest of the values to gather more data. Um, and, but if, let's say you have one million rows, and in the third, uh, three values in, you already know you can't hash everything, and you still go through the rest of the things, then you're wasting basically uh, a lot of CPU cycles going through some, basically just collecting data on, on, on a batch that you already know you're gonna have to change the hash mode for. So the optimization we did is fail early so that we go to rehash early. And that ended up saving a lot of time. So, so after that optimization, we, um, we just you know, continue to play with uh, just running aggregation on that time series data. And um, the next issue we run into is using larger batch size still results in slower aggregation. But this time the reason is because um, when you, every time you, so remember back to the hash table cycle where 
when you try to add an input, um, it basically t it needs to do a hash table lookup, and then uh, right, it needs to do a hash a lookup into the hash table. The the lookup data structure uh, size is linear with respect to the size of the input because uh, because of how hash probing works. So basically, um, when you uh, try to probe an input against the hash table, it hashes all the rows, and then you do the probe, and then it returns back out um, a vector of indices of where, of where in the hash table the, each row in the, in, in the input would go. And uh, uh, so be, because, of, because, of, uh, the, because of the lookup result needs to hold an index for every input row, the, um, the larger the batch size, the larger the lookup structure. So, so the lookup structure size basically scales with the input. Um, and that's, that in, in and of itself is just a waste of memory. But we also did this uh, thing that was kind of uh, not smart, which is when we create the hash lookup structure, we also eagerly uh, zero it. And, uh, and as it turns out, that zeroing is what's taking up a lot of time and unnecessary because even if you don't zero the lookup structure, uh, after the probe, the hash table will fill in everything anyway, meaning overwriting the entire structure. So there's no way, there's no need to zero it beforehand. So the solution is to not zero the lookup structure. And that ended up also saving a bunch of time. And so, so the, okay, so that's the, uh, the optimizations we did. And uh, the net outcome is, um, two optimization PRs uh, that are burst. So uh, if anyone's running the Presto native worker runtime, you're enjoying the benefit of that already. And the takeaways uh, from this journey or exercise is pay attention to small details and investigate like minute discrepancies. And secondly, uh, recognize code behavior that looks constant time, but actually is linear. Like, like that lookup structure is zeroing, uh, zeroing action, which, which takes CPU time that's linear to the input size. So don't assume something is constant time. Be careful with assuming that. Um, and yeah, that's the end of the lightning talk. Thank you for your time. Uh, any questions? No? Okay, great.